Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen to unbox. Uh, it comes in this very nice white box, I have to say. Uh, this is a Narwhal Pens, and this is the Nautilus. Now, this is a Colt Pens exclusive, and this model is called the Tideland from Colt Pens, and retails for around about 140 UK pounds. So, uh, it comes in this uh, white box, uh, square box. So, I think if we uh, go to... Uh, remove the outer case and I will show you here it's quite tight and you get this inner box here and it says Narwhal or Narvala Nautilus now Narwhal in 2022 did change their name uh, in terms of the spelling, so this is the new spelling of the name, and I will just show that there on camera. So, Narvala or Narwhal, basically, and this is the Nautilus. So, it does come in this lovely white box, and it has a little bit of a magnetic cap here. So, if I open the box, you see again nice presentation, a nice glossy Narwhal logo uh, there and also the user guide on how to fill the pen now this is a piston filling pen and it shows you how to turn the piston knob submerge the nib in ink and then twist it again to fill this also acts as a warranty card as well and then you have this uh, pen here uh, in this lovely bed uh, of foam so I think if I just close the box and remove it uh, you'll see here the pen comes in this little plastic bag and I'll remove that as well and this is the pen so as I mentioned this is the Narwhal Nautilus uh, called the Tideland and this is a limited edition for Colt pens in the UK uh, retails for around about £140 without discount. Uh, this is a new range of ebonite pens that Narwhal have created. And it also has their, what they call their proprietary ink window there. So you actually have these portholes. There are three portholes around the body there. Now, if I go to show you the pen uh, you'll see here that um, it does have this uh, domed cap finial, which just is a uh, chrome finish there. There's nothing actually uh, engraved or written on that cap finial. Uh, you do have a clip here. Now, it's not back spring uh, there, but you can actually pull the clip. I do find that this is quite a stiff clip, uh, but if you do like stiff clips on pens, then... Uh, you will probably like the clip on on the Narwhal Nautilus range. Now, it is a little bit of a sort of uh, a cylindrical pen. Uh, looks a little bit like a cigar shaped pen, but uh, it doesn't taper down uh, at the cap finial or the piston knob as much as most cigar uh, shaped pens would. Uh, now, you'll see here that it is pretty sort of straight all the way down to what is essentially there. A cap band and if I just get a little bit more of a closer shot there you'll see the cap band there and you'll also see those porthole ink windows in the Nautilus so this is actually made of ebonite this is quite a beautiful uh, pattern and, and material and color now there is a step down here from the cap just a slight step down and then obviously you've got the porthole here and it continues on to this uh, band here by the end of the piston knob uh, and this is the, the the piston turning knob there and then likewise there's nothing there on the end of uh, the body or, or the uh, piston knob but you can kind of see how these colors actually do look 
uh, at the end of what essentially is a pen or the rod of ebonite that this pen is made out of. I do like the patterns. Uh, sometimes you just get black ebonite. Sometimes you get some very uh, um, strange patterns. And I do actually think that this this Tideland actually looks quite nice. It's got a lot of blues and greys and blacks in it. Uh, and I do think that that actually makes it look quite nice. Now, if I unscrew the cap here, uh, you'll see that it does have a uh, Nautilus logoed nib. Now, the Narwhal do actually say that they do make these nibs in-house. Now, this is a steel nib, and you will see there that that is a fine nib. Um, you can get a 14 karat gold nib on a lot of these pens. Uh, Narwhal do actually allow you to upgrade if you're buying direct. I think you can buy certain models from certain retailers with the 14 karat gold nib uh, there as well. Uh, this one at Colt Pens for the price point of £140 does actually uh, come with a steel nib though. So uh, you won't be getting a gold nib for £140. Uh, it does come in a fine, medium, broad, extra broad, which I would uh, presume to be a double broad, and a stub nib. Now, uh, you do get an ABS plastic feed there that you can see, and the feed is quite thin and contoured as well. There is a slight lip that comes out, flares out, towards the base of the section just to stop your fingers slipping onto the nib and the feed and, and becoming a little bit inky. Uh, the section does taper out to the cap threads here. There is a slight step up there to the body and the barrel of the pen. And if I uh, likewise unscrew the piston knob, it will pull out to there. Now, um, one thing I do find, uh, so this is with the piston fully down. And if I twist this you will see the piston disappearing there there you go it's coming back and then disappearing again now i do find that these uh, portholes because there's there's three of these portholes there's one here there's two and then there's three they don't it, it is a little bit more difficult to actually see through these you have to look at an angle and not if you're looking straight on you are not going to see so uh, it is a little bit more difficult, I would say, to see the ink or no ink there if you're getting low. Um, I think it would have looked better if you had had maybe two of these symmetrical either side. Um, the other thing I have noticed is that the portholes don't quite line up with the nib. Um, from what I've seen on other uh, Nautilus models, uh, it's the same as well. So if you do have a little bit of OCD... Uh, and you would want those to line up, then then they do not. Uh, but other than that, though, it's a very nice pen. Um, it will not post the cap, uh, so you do have to bear that in mind. Now, one thing that I will mention here, and I'm fairly sure that this is a minority of pens coming from Narwhal, but this, because it's Ebonite, um, what I find is that uh, sometimes I cannot screw this cap on and this cap has essentially cross threaded itself and you have to be careful with Ebonite because if you force it you can actually almost bore your own threads so you do have to be a bit careful now sometimes you can back off and go it's a three thread cap uh, thread and sometimes you can back off and go to the next thread but as you can see it's still not going on. Sometimes it will screw on perfectly fine, and in other times, I just cannot get it to screw on. See, that time it screwed on perfectly fine. Now, if it locks, what I have found is that, and I believe the case of this is, is that the cap, inner cap, has been bored too much, and then the threads cut so that they don't meet up with the body threads. Uh, on the section very well but what you can do is click and just push and then do the same the other side and then it will screw up every single time so again so that's screwed on then and then it's locked again and then 
do that and it's fine and it will screw back on. Uh, so that is a little bit of a disappointment, I, I would say, uh, with the, the pen. Now, I have looked online. Uh, I have not seen other people complaining about this. So I do think this is maybe a one-off or in the minority where maybe um, there are just a, a few pens out there from Narwhal that, that may have a problem screwing that cap on. Um, but it is obviously a, a little bit of a, a, a trick in getting that to go back on see that went on perfectly fine there and then that is locking again um, and but if I just click that and then screw it it works perfectly fine and what I'm actually doing there is jumping a thread because it's it's gone on cross threaded and by just applying a little bit of pressure to the other side it's jumping the thread and actually getting you into the thread where you should be and allowing you to screw that cap back onto the pen I do like the Nautilus. Uh, it, it is an interesting model. The, the portholes actually do remind me a little bit of uh, a Mont Blanc, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, where they have this actually on uh, the cap. Uh, but for the Mont Blanc, Arthur Conan Doyle, it's actually more of a magnifying glass for Sherlock Holmes. This is a Nautilus submarine type um, theme going. So, so these are porthole windows. But it does actually remind me very uh, much of... Uh, the Mont Blanc um, Arthur Conan Doyle pen, uh, which I do actually like. And, and I have to say that I do like uh, these ink windows. I, I think it, it's been very well designed in, in that aspect. So I think with that, we'll do a size check, we'll do a weight check, we'll do a pen comparison, and then we'll do a writing sample. So the length of the pen is about 148 millimeters in length. The length of the cap is 65 millimeters in length. We'll unscrew the cap and we'll measure the body. We are looking to the tip of the nib or tip of the tines. We're looking about 132 millimeters in length. So this is what I would class to be an oversized pen. Uh, and I'm just going to screw that cap back on we'll do a weight check now bearing in mind this is uninked at the moment uh, we are seeing uh, just uh, over 34 grams in weight so that's not a bad weight pen uh, it is ebonite so the cap we're looking at just over 15 grams in weight and then the weight of the body we are looking at just over 19 grams, just under 19 and a half grams in weight. So that's not a bad weight pen. And honestly, I would expect that really from an ebonite pen. An ebonite does feel quite warm to the touch, uh, more so than a resin pen or a plastic pen. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Twisby Vac 700R Iris. A Twisby Vax 700R. We have an Opus 88 Calaro Demonstrator. We have a Conway Stewart Series 100. Uh, we have the uh, Narwhal Nautilus. We have a Diplomat Aero. We have a, a Noto, and this is the Magna Classic. We have a Santini Italia. And we have another Santini Italia. And we have a London Pen Company. Christopher 14. So I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So this is the uh, Narwhal and they have changed their name slightly. So I am going to uh, put in the new spelling of the name, which is Narvala. And this is the Nautilus. Uh, and it is the uh, Colt Pens exclusive and it is uh, called the Tideland. Now this is a fine and it is a steel nib. Now the ink in here today is uh, Diamine and I put in O'Donnell. Now 
I was thinking about maybe doing something like Diamine Earl Grey because there is a lot of grey in the pen, but uh, I decided I would do uh, a sort of greenish teal coloured ink. Now, in terms of line variation, this definitely is a Western Fine Steel Nib. Uh, I can push it a little bit more, uh, and you can get some line variation out of that nib. Now, you can see here on these vertical strokes, there's no hard starts or skips. So I'm finding this nib is actually very well tuned. Uh, I have seen um, complaints online where there are inconsistencies with the Narwhal uh, in-house made nibs, uh, mostly the steel nibs, because uh, that's typically what sells the most probably for the price point. Uh, but I'm not seeing any issues here whatsoever in terms of uh, the writing experience. This is a fine nib. It's very smooth. Uh, it's not uh, crisp, it, like a, a crisp metallic. It's not scratchy in any way. Now, I, I think let's do a ink wetness test. So it is quite a wet uh, writing nib. Uh, not quite what I would say is a fire hose nib but it's not that far off what do i like what do i not like about the pen uh i think this is a fairly reasonably priced pen comes in uh without sale at 140 uk pound uh it does have a steel nib um it is a little bit more expensive than maybe say a twisby uh twisby diamond 580 uh or even maybe a twisby vac 700r it is made from ebonite though, uh, and that material is a little bit more special, I would say. Uh, I do like the, the cap trim here, the band. I do like the ink windows on the pen as well. Uh, I do typically like the shape of the pen. The pen writes very well out of the box for me, uh, quite wet. And uh, I have to say that this is a, a nice pen. Uh, you can, for around about the same price, get a few pens with gold nibs. Uh, Norwell do make their own in-house nibs. I believe the seal nibs and the 14 karat gold nibs you can get are both made in-house. Uh, so you could potentially with another brand, something like a Waterman Karen for the same price, almost get a gold, 14 karat gold nib. So it may be a little bit uh, on the, the higher price side, although typically I would say uh, any pen under 250 pound euro dollars uh, would normally have a steel nib on. So I think that's perfectly acceptable uh, from uh, Narwhal's perspective. Um, I guess the only thing that I do dislike is that cap mechanism that those threads uh, really do keep locking up. And I am pretty sure from what I've read online that this is uh, the minority um, this is not what you're going to see with every Narwhal pen, but just clicking that, uh, moving on to the thread, uh, will allow you to screw that uh, down um, onto the, the cap onto the section there. Um, but it is a little bit of a niggly that I would say um, you kind of... But with a pen nowadays, there are two things I would say that you really want to look at. One is that the pen writes out of the box. And the other is that the cap will go on the pen. And and if you can't get the cap on the pen very easily, then the pen will dry out. Um, but like I said, I'm pretty sure this is in the minority. So I don't think you're going to see this in most Narwhal pens. I think this is just a one-off. So there you have it. There's my Narwhal Nautilus Colt Pens exclusive Tideland in a fine steel nib review. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.